In the previous OT clinic session, we discussed a case on COPD and asthma patients. And today we have a 32 year old man with an open globe injury posted for surgery. So hello everyone, myself Dr. Karthik D. Gutla. I am an anesthesiologist. So today let us discuss how we are going to manage this case. In these kind of cases, there are two main concerns for the anesthesiologist. Firstly, the risk of aspiration. Since it is an emergency surgery, the patient must be considered as full stomach. And the second concern is rise in intraocular pressure. Remember that for an open globe injury, the surgery should be performed within 12 hours to prevent any infections or other complications. Now this patient is with you for the preoperative evaluation. What would you do? Like all other cases, take a thorough history find the time of last foot intake, do a quick general physical examination. It is important to check for any other associated injuries like skull fractures or any other intracranial hemorrhage. Even though there is a risk of aspiration, do not try to put a nasogastric tube when patient is awake because this can increase the intraocular pressure from 12 to 20 mm of Hg which is normal to 30 to 40 mm of Hg, which can cause extrusion of the intracranial contents. Now, how would you pre-medicate this patient? You can give metaclopramide 0.15 mg per kg IM or IV. You can give IV ondansetron 0.1 mg per kg. Injection glycopyrrolate, which can be given to reduce secretions. Now, what are the challenges you will face intraoperatively which will increase the risk of vitreous herniation. Eyeball may be pressed by the face mask. Coughing, bucking, head down positions, all these can increase the intraocular pressure. And hypoxia, hypercarbia, hypertension, and intubation and extubation response, all these can cause choroidal congestion. Alright, now what are our options for anesthetizing this patient? For open eye injuries, general anesthesia is preferred because giving retrobulbar or peribulbar injection can increase the intraocular pressure because high volumes of local anesthetic is injected. And also, placing a cuffed endotracheal tube will protect the airway from aspiration. When general anesthesia is contraindicated in selected patients, topical anesthesia with IV sedation can also be used. While giving general anesthesia to this patient, never forget these important points. First point, we cannot afford even a slight rise in the intraocular pressure. So maintain adequate depth and muscle relaxation throughout the surgery. Second point, prevent intubation and extubation response by giving intravenous lignocaine 1.5 mg per kg or beta blockers like esmolol 0.5 mg per kg IV or alpha-2 agonist or opioids. Third point is usage of succinylcholine. Usage of succinylcholine for an open eye injury is controversial. Studies suggest a transient increase in the intraocular pressure by 6 to 8 mm Hd and it returns to baseline in 5 to 7 minutes. The succinylcholine can increase intraocular pressure by three main mechanisms. There is prolonged tonic contraction of the extraocular muscles. Then there is an increased central venous pressure and also there is an increased resistance to outflow of aqueous humor due to the cycloplegic effects of succinylcholine. Some reports suggest using a small dose of non-depolarizing muscle relaxant before succinylcholine, this is called as priming, can attenuate the rise in the intraocular pressure to certain extent. You can also use rocuronium, one 0.2 mg per kg, which is a better alternative for succinylcholine. For induction, prefer propofol 2 to 3 mg per kg, which is the best choice for as induction agent. Avoid ketamine because it may cause nystagmus and blepharospasm. Some reports also reported a rise in intraocular pressure due to ketamine. Avoid etomidate because of risk of myoclonus, which can again lead to elevated intraocular pressure. All inhalational agents increase the depth of anesthesia 
and decrease the intraocular pressure by facilitating aqueous humor outflow. Well, now the surgery is going on very well and suddenly the heart rate dropped to 38 beats per minute. Now what would you do? This is nothing but oculocardiac reflex. The ECG can also confirm the oculocardiac reflex by showing you bradycardia, ectopic beats, bigemini, AV block or even a flat line leading to cardiac arrest. This oculocardiac reflex is a trigeminovagal reflex which is triggered by the traction on the extraocular muscles, especially the medial rectus muscle. It can also be due to manual manipulation of the globe by the ophthalmologist. Now how are you going to treat this condition? Immediately stop the surgical stimulus, inform the surgeon, ensure adequate depth of anesthesia, ensure adequate ventilation and oxygenation. You can give drugs like atropine or glycopyrrolate, 0.4 mg per kg of atropine or 20 microgram per kg of atropine can help. If still unresolved, a local anesthetic infiltration of the recti muscles can be helpful. Now during extubation, also minimize the responses like coughing and bucking by using lignocaine or IV fentanyl. And yes, now that the patient is still paralyzed, you can empty the stomach using the nasogastric tube. Do suctioning while the patient is deeply anesthetized only. Give an antiemetic like ondansetron or dexamethasone before the end of the surgery. Now this patient was discharged, he went home happily but returned again after two months with impaired vision. So the ophthalmologist diagnosed a detached retina and planned for a pneumatic retinopexy. In pneumatic retinopexy, a gas bubble is injected into the posterior chamber of the eye. Now if this patient is posted for surgery any time from now, any time you are giving GA for this patient, it is important to remember that you must avoid nitrous oxide till the complete resorption of this gas bubble. Alright, so yes, that is all about today's discussion. Click that subscribe button and bell icon and do not forget to like the video and share it with your colleagues. Hope these videos are being helpful to you. See you in the next case discussion. Thank you.